Lisa Kaplan. She's the program coordinator over at Henry Ford Maple Grove Community Education. Thank you for taking time to be with us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. So while so many of us have had a little bit of a break during this pandemic, you and your team, I would imagine, have been extremely busy. What are the trends that you're seeing? Okay, so I will tell you most substance abuse treatment facilities have limited the amount of people coming in. Some like ours had to close for a period of time because of the pandemic. So all of the people who need help are not getting it, unfortunately. The other thing is that our outpatient programs are all now online. That means our intensive outpatient programs and our individual sessions are still happening, but they're, the patients are being seen virtually by their therapist. So the sense of camaraderie of being in person in a group room together are not happening at this time. The other issue is, is that the 12 step meetings, the support groups for people who are in recovery, many of them are not meeting in person. They are meeting online. Some are meeting in person, but again, that connection that people had with one another is limited. So it's, it's a problem very much so at this time. So have the numbers increased of the people that we have lost due to overdoses or alcoholism during this time? So yes, I, I do not have statistics available, but yes. So when, when we first got locked down or, or um, you know, quarantined in March and April, alcohol sales went up exponentially. So you can imagine that people who have an alcohol problem or even those who don't are going to have an issue. So that was big. The other thing is um, overdoses have continued. I know that Chief Patton keeps statistics on how many people in West Bloomfield have overdosed. So that would be a good question for him. But, you know, we hear about it on the news all the time. Um, people are still overdosing because they're not getting the help that they need. So Lisa, I know in the beginning there were a lot of questions as to why the state of Michigan allowed alcohol stores and liquor stores to remain open, but some people were saying that for those that are alcoholics, not being able to get alcohol could have, you know, put them into a downward spiral, you know, even the physical response of the body, correct? Yes, absolutely. So someone who is used to having alcohol in their system. If they were to quit cold turkey because they don't have access to it, if the stores were closed, they would have withdrawal symptoms, which are very dangerous and potentially deadly. So with alcohol, we're worried about seizures and high blood pressure, and either one can kill people. But other drugs as well, um, you would think that heroin, if you stop cold turkey, could kill you. What's interesting about heroin is it won't. It'll make you very, very, very sick, but it won't kill you. But alcohol and benzodiazepines, which are the class of drugs like sedatives, like Xanax, if you quit cold turkey, you're putting yourself at risk. So I don't know what the governor's thinking was. Maybe it was that, but that's why people who, who are used to having alcohol in their system needed to continue using for their own safety. The problem is for many people, many new people developed an alcohol problem. And of course, those who had an alcohol prob problem, continued use made it progressively worse. Lisa Kaplan joining us, program coordinator at Henry Ford Maple Grove Community Education today on the Oakland County Megacast. And, and Lisa, earlier on, you had mentioned that uh, in-person meeting between maybe therap therapists and their clients or uh, support groups have been reduced or eliminated during the pandemic in favor of virtual options. How has that been impacting the treatment of those with substance abuse issues? Well, I think it depends on the person. For some, it's way more convenient to be at home on a computer talking to your therapist. You don't have to drive anywhere. It's, it's safe. It's easy. But for others, they like the connection of being face-to-face -face in person in a group room or in an office. So I think it's dependent on the person, um, but for a lot of people, the especially those who have isolated themselves in their addiction, it was healthy and good for them to be out and about among people, and now they can't as much. Can you talk a little bit about, uh, for those that abuse drugs, 
I think I read somewhere where because some of the borders were closed, it was harder for drugs to get smuggled into the United States. So people were turning to different types of drugs. Did you see that here in this area? Okay, I'm sure that that is true. However, someone who wants to get drugs can get drugs. Okay, I don't know if you're aware of this, but you can order them on the internet. They can be delivered to your front door. Um, people who have a supply chain, like they have a pusher, they we, we used to call it a pusher, a drug dealer, they still have access. So someone who wants drugs can get it. I'm sure there are some people who could not, so they would turn to other drugs. Um, very often alcohol was more accessible. So um, it's if you want drugs, you can get them. Plus marijuana is legal now. And so access to marijuana was probably easier than maybe some of the other drugs. So when someone switches from one drug to another drug and becomes addicted to the other drug, we call that cross addiction, which is very, very common. So, you know, if you want to get high or drunk, you can do it. For those that are struggling right now, what advice can you give to them or to their loved ones that want to try to get them help are there some inpatient services that are available? Yes, absolutely. So if a person has Medicaid, they can contact their county community mental health and get an assessment done and then be referred to a treatment program that is open that has a bed available. Okay, there might be a wait at this time or not, but that's the way to go. A person who has private insurance or can afford to private pay can seek treatment at any treatment agency that's open. So for example, Maple Grove is open. They can call our intake number and they can get in fairly quickly. So that's for inpatient treatment. A person who wants outpatient treatment, essentially it's the same. They call the access number and they get offered an appointment. So there is help available for sure for the person who has the addiction. Now let's talk about the family. Before COVID, Maple Grove had very robust family programs for anybody who has a family or loved one who's using. And in March, that closed down. I'm happy to say that very soon, we will be starting up again over Zoom. So if anybody is interested in participating in these programs, they need to email me at L Kaplan, K A P L A N, and the number two at hfhs.org. That stands for Henry Ford Health System.org. And what I'm going to be doing is as soon as we're ready to be up and running, we're going to email everyone who is interested and give them a Zoom link so that they can participate in our free family programs that are going to be on Thursday nights starting at six o'clock. So we're going to have a skill building class and a family support group, which we used to offer before COVID every Tuesday and Thursday night in person. And anybody in the community is welcome to participate. So again, L Kaplan, K-A-P-L-A-N and the number two at hfhs.org, Henry Ford Health System.org. And I will put you on the email list to let you know when we're up and running. Lisa Kaplan with us on the Oakland County Megacast. She's the program coordinator at Henry Ford Maple Grove Community Education. How important is it to have the family involved in this recovery process? Very, very important. Can't be understated. So addiction is a family disease. Whether the family realizes it or not, they are part of the disease. Either they're enabling the user to continue using, okay? Or what they're doing, what they think is helping may not be helping. So families need education too. And that's why we are so, um, we have promoted our family program so strongly over the years. We believe if we help our family members, we're also helping our patients. So when that uh, program starts up, is there a limit to how many people can participate? We haven't determined that yet, but I'm going to hope the answer is no, because, you know, with Zoom, I don't know what the limit is, but we're working on that right now. The other thing that family members can do now before even that gets up and running is Al-Anon and Naranon are 12-step support groups 
for family members who have a loved one who's using. And I believe that those meetings are also online. Some may be in person. And so family members can do that right now. Lisa Kaplan with us. She is the program coordinator at Henry Ford Maple Grove Community Education. Joining us today on the Oakland County Megacast, Lisa, uh, as we head into, as we, we're now into the fall and we're heading into the colder months of the year, how does, does that have any impact on trends in substance use and abuse in the local area? How does, how does the change in, in seasons and, and these times of the year usually affect people and how maybe as, is COVID also going to play uh, maybe a two-side attack in, in this coming season? Yeah, so that's a great question, Tyler. We don't know because we've never been through a fall in a pandemic before. But what I will say is typically in the fall, as the days get shorter and there's less sunlight, many people suffer from what we call seasonal affective disorder. And um, so it's like a depression that people go into when the, when the weather gets, when the days get shorter and the weather gets colder, and then they come out of it in the spring. So that's always an issue. And people commonly self-medicate mental health disorders with substances. So that probably happens every year. In a pandemic, it might be worse because if people are following the rules, there's, they're gonna be more isolated in the colder weather, can't be outside with other people. So I will, I'm betting that we're gonna see a lot more mental health problems. And again, more people at medicating mental health problems with substances. I hope I'm wrong, but probably not. Yeah, for so many people, being able to get outdoors and get some sunshine and enjoy this nice weather has really helped them cope yeah. with everything we've been going through, the anxiety, the stress. And when we talk about mental health, how much is mental health and addiction connected? Or in some degree, are they one and the same? They absolutely go hand in hand. Most people who have a substance use disorder also have a mental health disorder. And both need to be treated. Back in the day, they would only treat one at a time. Nowadays, we treat both. They have to be treated together to be successful. Lisa Kaplan with us, the program coordinator at Henry Ford Maple Grove uh, Community Education, joining us today on the Oakland County Megacast. Uh, Lisa, just another few minutes with you before we had to let you go. Anything else that would be important for our audience to know at this time or any other information that we haven't touched on today in this, in this discussion? So yes, two things I want to mention. One is vaping. So many of you know that vaping has become a huge trend over the last few years, and especially among young people. So the problem is vaping affects your lungs and COVID is a respiratory illness. People who are vaping who then get COVID are putting themselves at an even higher risk than anybody else who should get COVID. So it's really, really dangerous. And a lot of young kids say, you know, I'm young, I'm not gonna get that sick from COVID. If they're vaping, yes, they are. So it's a really scary thing. The other thing is you may have heard on the news yesterday about whippets. So when, when we were young, we would see these little canisters, these metal canisters lying around playgrounds and such, and they're finding them again. It's a very common thing. And whippets are nitrous oxide that people use to get high. So that's another big trend that is um, that we're seeing. So kids who are outside, teens who are outside, not under the supervision of their parents, could still be using this and be undetected. So just giving a heads up to parents out there. Yeah, so what should parents look for if they think this is going on with their kids or after hearing what you just alerted them to, they wanna find out more and see if maybe their kids are abusing these uh, substances? Okay, so parents have the right to search their child's room, car, pockets, jackets, if they believe that there's an issue or even if they don't, because the parent owns the house and owns everything in the house. So they are, they are encouraged to do that if there's a reason, and some pa parents do it even if there isn't a reason. But you, what you wanna definitely do is you want to know the signs and symptoms of substance use, which there's a long list. You can Google it and look it up. You also want to have a drug test at home, which hopefully you will never need, but your child knows you have um, in case you need to test them. Um, the other thing is of course, to have the conversation about drugs and about the dangers and kids are very educated. 
parents need to be educated as well. So anything you want to learn, you can Google and um, be educated as well. But the communication between the parent and child is very, very important. And if you suspect a problem, a parent should get the child help immediately. Addiction is a progressive disease that gets worse over time. And the sooner you address it, the better. So um, seeing a substance abuse therapist right off the bat is probably not a bad idea. Lisa, I'm not going to earn any fans with the younger generation, but I say it's okay for the parents to snoop through their phone. It used to be back in the day you wrote a diary. Now everything is in their phone. Snoop, you should have the password. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So I will tell you that in our adolescent program, many of the parents first learned about their child's substance use by going through their phone. It's very important. No, you know, parents own the phone. Parents are paying the bill. Parents should have every password, should have access to every account, and phones should not be in the bedroom overnight. The, the teen should turn in the phone because if they have a choice between being on the phone and sleeping, what do you think they're going to do? Okay, so the parents should have access to the phone at night and any time that they want it. And if the child will not share a password, then they should not have a phone. Good advice to earn or to uh, go ahead and end this conversation on. Thank you for being with us. It's, it's so many different things for people to look at, not just for maybe you're checking in for your brother, your sister, sister, your husband, your wife, but also parents with their kids. Some great information, some great advice. We appreciate it and uh, you being with us today as well. Thank you for having me.